Everybody now he's going to tell us exactly this, uh, why he's picked, who he's picked. So let's hand Martin, over and hear see, what the England manager Gareth has got to say. So we'll get started straight away with Rob Dorsey from Sky Sports News. <laughs> Gareth, nice to see you on a big day. Um, a day when you've broken some hearts and, and you've made a number of players' dreams come true, I suspect. Um, but crucially, before we get into the individuals and, and the decisions that you've made, when you look at that squad of 26... Do you believe it has everything in there needed to win a World Cup? <laughs> yeah, that we, we've wanted to make sure we've got the balance of the squad right. Um, I think in this day and age, squad is more important than ever. We've, we're now five substitutes. You can have almost half the team changed during a game. So you want different options for different moments of, of matches um, and for different stages of the tournament as well. Um, We've obviously had to cover a couple of players that aren't yet fully fit, fully match fit as well. So having 26 available meant that we were probably able to take a couple of risks that you might not have been able to with 23. Um, but we think the balance is there and we've got cover in the, the positions we need. We're, we're lighter on depth in some positions than other in, in our country. Um, but we think we've got everything covered. We said widely across every bit of the media, I think, before you pick your squad, that James Madison would be the headline story, whether he was in or, or whether he was out. He's in. Why is he in? He's playing really well. Um, look, he's a good player. We've always said he's a good player. He's earned the right. Um, he, we think he can give us something slightly different to the other attacking players that we've got. So I think at various stages there have been conversations, debates about James. There's been moments where, you know, ahead of the Euros, he, I don't think he was in contention. He had a bit of a problem with his hip. And then I think September was probably a, a fair debate. Um, but I think he's playing as well as any of the attacking players in this country. And, um, yeah, he is a little bit different to the others. We've got different types of threat, and I think we, we could need that. Uh, did you speak personally to Callum Wilson? Was he absolutely delighted? I haven't had a chance with Callum. I did speak to James because I think this morning there was a lot of speculation that James wouldn't be with us and we decided a couple of weeks ago that we would but we weren't obviously going to go <laughs> and tell him then. Um, I didn't get a chance to speak with Callum. My priority always on these days is the difficult conversations and the sad news and that is really tough. You know, there's... Um, not many situations in football harder than that. Maybe releasing a young player um, at, at the early stages of their career, but the, the nature of those conversations, good and bad, reminds you of how much it means to a player to go to a World Cup. And um, yeah, I'm very conscious of that. Um, so it is a great day, but also for some, I've had to disappoint them. One of those is Tammy Abraham, I suspect, and you've gone for Wilson ahead of Tammy Abraham. What was that discussion and debate like in your mind? Yeah, look, um, Tammy's had a, a poor run of scoring form at the wrong time, really, and it's not a case where we're three, four weeks away from a final and, and the start of the first match, we're now ten days, and so form could be more important. I, th I think we don't really know any of the players. We're watching... Um, their club form, but we don't really know where they are until we see them face to face, until we see them on the training pitch. We get regular medical updates from all their clubs, but there'll be medical issues that we're not completely aware of yet. Um, we know the form we're seeing in the matches, but even so, you, you still don't get the full picture from the players until you're able to speak with them, work with them, um, and see how they train with each other. You hinted that you wanted extra cover for, for players that might be struggling with injury, and obviously Calvin Phillips and Kyle Walker are the two obvious ones there. Mm. How are they? How big a gamble is it to include them in, in this squad? And, and can we assume that neither can really play a part in the, in the opening game? Uh, no, that's not the case. I mean, Calvin played last night. Um, uh, so I think with him, he's free of injury. The, um, we are aware that... Um, he's not going to be able to play 790 minutes. That, that, that won't be possible. Um, we're going to have to build his fitness level. Um, but he's available, he's free of injury, and we don't really have 
you know, we, we have Declan Rice as a defensive midfielder. Hendo can play there, but it's not his number one position. Um, so we don't have a lot of cover for that role in the country. And Calvin is a super player. And we feel that, um, you know, that's a, a risk worth taking because he's also, generally his fitness is good. Um, and yeah, we, we think um, he can add to the group. And Kyle, similarly? Kyle, a little bit different in that he's not back in full training yet, but he, he's going to be available before the end of the group stage. And, of course, we had to make a very difficult call with Reese, who we think is a fantastic player. But he wasn't going to be available until, if everything went perfectly, until the latter stages of the tournament. And there were too many unknowns for us on that road to recovery. And also, I don't think we can take a player who's not available for the group. That would be deemed arrogant in some circles. But also, we'd then be dropping, if, he, if everything went well and he was available and he was ready and we were picking him, then you'd be dropping him into a quarterfinal after eight weeks out. And that's, that would be really demanding. So, yeah, tough call. Um, Kyle is a long way ahead of that and um, is, is progressing really well. Thank you. Carrie? Hello, Gareth. Um, can we look at Harry Maguire, a player that's struggling to get minutes but has been a stalwart for you? What was your decision-making process and how much have you been in touch with Manchester United about what he's doing when he's not getting those playing minutes? And uh, will you be considering him as an out-and-out -out attacker after his uh, playing time alongside Ronaldo against Real Sociedad? Well, physically, um, we've had really good communication with all of the clubs in this period on the training loads of all of the players because we've got to pick that up immediately on, uh, well, it'll be Wednesday before we see them on the training pitch. Um, so we needed to know those who are playing, what's their load, those who are playing less regularly. Some have had a unbelievably intense schedule, some have had less so. So we're picking up various fitness levels and we've got to get that right on the training pitch. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we've picked um, our more experienced defenders and we think that at this moment in time, the younger ones have got some really good qualities, but um, we don't think they've quite done enough to push the more experienced ones out. And we think the tournament we're going into and the level of the matches, that, that needed to be the pecking order. You've always said that Trent Alexander-Arnold is an outstanding player, always in consideration, but he didn't start in the games building up to this announcement. What conversations did you have with him and what's been his reaction that he is now in the squad? No, as I said, really the only phone calls I've made have been to um, the two lads that are coming back from injury, the boys I left out of the squad and then to James because um, you know, I felt that was a, a, an important call to make this morning. The rest of the guys, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and we're, we've been monitoring fitness, monitoring matches, um, dealing with so much. So I think they'll be delighted they'll get the news and, um, yeah, we've got plenty of time to chat over the next few weeks. And for you now, going forward, when you've got a real balance between the experience of the players, the 12 that have been to a World Cup, before and, and the rest of this squad and this, this quick turnaround. Is that exactly why you've brought the likes of Harry Maguire back in when they haven't had those match minutes? Yeah, he's one of our best centre-backs. So um, I think we, we know um, within the squad we've got a lot of players that we know have been to tournaments, have performed at the level, know what's required. Um, we've got other players who are playing well, who are in... Um, form right at this moment and we've got to balance all of that when we're picking our team You didn't call up James Madison in the last camp hasn't played a few years now for England mm -hmm. a lot of people would have assumed that's because one of the camps he missed because he was ill and then was seen in a casino watching the match, you said at the time well that would just remind him of the scrutiny of being an England player, Have you? Mm -hmm. did you have a conversation about that again or on his form, is it just unnecessary? No, I, I, I didn't have Look, that was unfortunate from his perspective in that um, it became a bigger issue than it was for me because of, uh, you know, you end up in the papers, nobody likes that. I, I live with it every day, so I don't, I don't take any notice of it. But um, for me, that wasn't the drama that it seemed to be for everybody else. Um, he's always been up against some really good players in that area of the pitch. And there's been moments where... 
we were playing 4-3-3, no number 10 type profile, and that didn't necessarily fit. Um, but he's, he's, as I said earlier, he's playing exceptionally well. Um, we like the fact that he finds those pockets of space. He gets turned, he plays forward. Not enough players play forward in this day and age. Um, and, of course, his set play delivery is outstanding. Um, and he can score goals from distance, which against low block defences is a is another attribute that is a little bit different to some of our other players. Thanks, Kerry. We'll go to John Murray from the BBC. Hiya, Gareth. You got me? Yeah. Can you give us a, a flavour of what James Madison's reaction was when he answered and you told him the news? Yeah, he was he was delighted and. Um, as I said, I had some very difficult calls that were emotionally at the other end of the spectrum. So, yeah, it was nice to give myself a little bit of a, uh, an enjoyable end to that because, you know, I'm excited about going to a World Cup. It's my fourth. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a privilege and an honour. And um, all of those calls, the, the difficult ones and the really enjoyable ones, were a reminder of what it means to the players. And what would you say this 26 that you've chosen this time has got that makes it stand out from the other two big squads you've picked for, for the World Cup and the Euros? Well, I, think, I think they've all been good squads. I mean, in 2018, we were at the start of something where we hadn't won a knockout game for 10 years and um, there was a little bit less experience, perhaps, within the group of, of big matches. Um, I think this is similar in terms of its standing to the to the group that went to the Euros. And, um, yeah, of course, within that period of time from the start to the end of that, some players have moved on age-wise, some players haven't progressed in the way they might have done. New players, young players have emerged that have, uh, that have given us great competition for places in most areas of the pitch. So um, we're excited by the group. We think there's a lot of... Um, exciting talent within it um, but the whole th group have got to come together you know there's a lot of challenges it's a unique situation for everybody this tournament the timing of it um, and the obstacles just to get to this point medically as much as anything so um, we've got to adapt better than everybody else in this in this coming period thanks go to channel four from. hi gareth um have the FA and the players come to a collective decision about what you will do or say if members from the LGBTQ plus community are victimised in any way during this particular World Cup? And as a follow-up question, Iran is your first match at this competition. They have been supplying the likes of Russia with weaponry. Should they be at this World Cup? So regarding the LGBT community, um, we stand for inclusivity and we're very, very strong on that. We think that's important in terms of all our supporters and we understand the challenges that, that, that this tournament brings within that. If it wasn't for the strength of that community, we wouldn't be women's European champions. So it's very, very important to us. Um, with Iran, um, look, that's a political situation that I don't know enough about to be able to comment. So. Those decisions have to be taken by governing bodies, and um, yeah, I can't comment with enough authority to give you a really considered view. FIFA have asked that nations don't talk about anything other than football when the football starts. Will you be going along with that? I think that's highly unlikely. Um, you know, I think we have always spoken um, about issues that we think should be talked about, particularly the ones we feel we can affect. Um, I think contrary to one or two um, observations in the last few weeks, we have spoken in the same way that other nations have spoken about this tournament and the human rights challenges. We've been very clear on our standpoint on that. Um, so, yeah, look, I think we would also like to focus primarily on the football. This is for every player and every coach and everybody travelling to a World Cup. This is a carnival of football. It's the thing you work for your whole life. So you don't want that to be diminished by everything else that's going on around it currently. Um, but we recognise that, that we are going to be in that situation and we've got to accept and deal with it. Thank you.